We are in Barcelona to drive the new Volvo EX30. It is rapid, properly rapid. It is cheap, how much? And it can fit a moose in the boot. Oh my God. It could have all the ingredients to make it the best new electric car of this year. But what's it like? We're finding out. First, this video is supported by Podpoint, winner of our best home EV charger test 2023. Look in our description below to find out more. So Volvos are designed in Sweden and most of them are built there, but it's a Swedish firm which is owned by a Chinese one. Geely also has a stake in Smart as well as Volvo. So actually what you find underneath the Volvo EX30 is also what's underneath the new Smart Hashtag One and the Zika X. But this all still feels and looks very Volvo and its design and its execution. So what is there to show you in this interior? Well, the first thing to point out is this new 12.3 inch touchscreen infotainment system. Now, like old Volvos, it's still got this portrait layout, but on old Volvos, the biggest screen you could get was nine inches. So now this is bigger than it was before. The software is also new and it's been co-developed with Google, which is a good thing because Google obviously knows what it's doing when it comes to tech, much more so than any car manufacturer out there. So it means that you've got Google Maps built in, you've got Google Assistant as well, and the infotainment system itself is really crisp in its response time. It's also got a nice look. The graphics have got a really nice resolution. The only problem is that the buttons and the icons are a bit on the small side. So if you're driving and you wanna adjust the climate or go to any of these main menus at the bottom, they're just a bit small and fiddly to try and hit while you're driving, which is a shame. Obviously physical buttons would help the operation of this hugely, but Volvo didn't have them in their old models and in this latest generation of stuff, it doesn't look like they're gonna be reintroducing any of them either, which is a shame. And if you do happen to like physical buttons, then you are sat in the wrong interior because in this EX30, there's only really these two window switches here and there's not even four. So if you wanna put the rear windows down from up front, You've got to press that and then use these to put the rear windows down. Now, the VW ID3 and the Cupra Born have a similar setup to this, but down here on the door. And in those cars, the execution of this idea is absolutely terrible. You're never sure if you've actually pressed the button or if you have, it doesn't seem like it's working. But in this EX30, it does actually work all the time. Another comparison to make with the ID3 and the Cupra Born is up here on the steering wheel. Now, at a glance in the EX30, you might see this and think, oh God, here we go. More touch sensitive, haptic type buttons on the wheel, but that isn't the case. In the ID3 and the Cupra Born, with those touch sensitive setups, the buttons are awful because you're never sure if you've pressed them or maybe you've accidentally pressed them. But here in the EX30, you do actually need a physical press of each one and you get a click to let you know that you've actually used it. But the problem is that because they're all on this one wobbly, shiny bit of plastic, it just looks a bit cheap and it also feels a bit cheap when you use it as well, which is a bit of a shame. So if you do like buttons, this isn't the interior for you. There isn't even a start button. So to actually get in the car, you need this key card, which if you tap on the B pillar here, locks and unlocks the EX30. And then when you get in the car, you take this card, put it down here, select a gear, drive off and away you go. But the thing to point out is that eventually you'll be able to turn your smartphone into a digital key for the EX30. However, the very first customers to take delivery of the EX30 might not have that function available to them. But Volvo has said as soon as it's available, it's going to be rolled out as an over the air update to all EX30s. So that means there is no button. And by the way, the gear selector is on the steering column rather than being down here on the center console where you might expect it. Again, to help free up some more space in this interior. And this lack of buttons in here is explained away by Volvo as being part of the minimalist design approach to this car's interior, which is probably true, but there must also be some fairly major cost saving benefits to Volvo as well. And this is an interior that really is stripped back 
to the bare minimum. There isn't even a driver display. So instead, if you wanna see how fast you're traveling, you have to look at the top of the infotainment system here, which we already know from the Tesla Model 3 isn't a perfect scenario because with a driver display that's right in front of you, obviously it's within your line of sight very easily. It's right in front of you and very easy to see while you drive. So not having a driver display must be cheaper for Volvo. Similarly, this door here, we've already said, doesn't have a switch for the window. That's on the center console and it doesn't even have a speaker. So instead you've got this sound bar running along the front of the car here. So that must surely be far simpler and cheaper for Volvo to manufacture than a door with some fiddly electronics in it. But anyway, what's the overall quality like in this interior? Well, there's a lot of plastic around in here, to be honest. Some of it feels like good quality plastic. Like on the center console here, this has obviously got this nice, interesting finish and it's made from recycled materials. And every EX30 has its own unique pattern when it's fitted with this finish, but it is still plastic. And on top of the dashboard here, it's not soft touch materials. The build quality feels good and solid. There are no wobbly bits around. There's no loose trim here and there. It feels like it's well screwed together, but the materials don't feel very luxurious, to be honest, particularly down here on the center console and same on the door card are really cheap feeling industrial kind of plastics. The look and the layout is very sleek and very clean, but the actual materials used for it aren't very premium feeling. Whereas in a smart hashtag one, as we said, a very similar car underneath to the EX30, that does have some nice flashes of plush feeling material here and there. The EX30 doesn't get it. And at the bottom end of the lineup, where this car actually undercuts a lot of its rivals, and we'll talk more about pricing later on, then that's fine. And this is still a good interior with a very good infotainment system that is better than the weird Fox thing that you get in the hashtag one. But at the top end of the Volvo EX30 lineup, you might feel a little shortchanged not getting any soft touch materials on the dashboard in exchange for your 44,000 pounds. Now, in terms of storage up front, you've got this fancy cup holder arrangement thing, which you can put in various different formations here, but you don't have the ability to lift up this armrest to reveal any big storage under there. But on the center console here, you've got this big tray with these two flaps you can lift open and keep things in there. And then this is where your wireless phone charging is. The glove box, by the way, is actually in the middle of the car and you can open it by using that button on the infotainment system. Now this is Volvo's smallest SUV, but just how small is it? Well, as you'd expect, it is very similar in its proportions to the Smart Hashtag One, which itself is quite similar to a VW ID3 in terms of the space that it takes up on the road. So this isn't some huge, great SUV, but it's also not exactly like it's a Renault Twizy or something, is it? So sat in these rear seats, you can see that headroom is really pretty good in this EX30. You've got this tall boxy SUV design. So headroom is impressive. And we're in a range topping model that comes with a fixed panoramic sunroof as standard, but we've been told whether you have this or whether you have a lower trim level without it, headroom isn't impacted at all. It's the same for both models. So it's good in that regard. Legroom, less impressive. But even still, you'd have to be pretty tall really to be sat in these rear seats and feel especially cramped. They'll be absolutely fine for children, but if you do need to regularly carry tall people around in the back of your electric SUV, then you're probably looking at the wrong kind of car. Other things to point out include the fact that the switch for the rear windows is on the center console and not on the door. Again, it's the same as the front. There's also an extra storage compartment back here, which is quite handy. And you can even remove this bin and find a picture of a moose on the side. The EX30 gets an electric tailgate as standard. You can open the boot from the infotainment system, or if you're back here, then it's this button on the rear of the car. In terms of overall capacity that the EX30 offers, this is not a very big boot. It is similar to the Smart Hashtag One. This is a little bit bigger, but both of those cars still, by the standards of electric SUVs and electric cars generally, are pretty small. In total, you have 318 litres of storage. That includes 61 litres of underfloor storage. For some context, a VW ID3 has a boot capacity of 385 litres and a Hyundai Kona Electric, a Kia Niro EV are way bigger than the boot that you find in the EX30. But the point is, if you're looking for something hugely practical with a massive boot, then you're looking at the wrong car. So what do you get back here? Well, something handy to point out is the fact that if you take the parcel shelf off, there is 
a very easy way to store it in the boot itself. So it fits very simply under the boot floor there, which is good. You haven't got to worry about finding somewhere in your house to keep it if you need to take it out. And of course you do get this height adjustable boot floor as standard. So you can put it in its lowest position to increase the overall capacity that you have in there. But you can see you're still left with quite a big lump at the back of the storage space. And then what you can do as well, if you need even more space, is flatten the rear seats, which you can't do from the boot, but it's still a fairly simple process. But when they are down, you can see they lie pretty flat with the boot floor when it's in its highest position. And there's also not much of a loading lip at the front as well. Something else included by Volvo to try and help the boot be more practical is this will it fit diagram which I guess is supposed to show you what can fit in the boot, but I don't really understand because lamps can be very different sizes and so can prams, but I guess it's helpful having these measurements at least. So, okay, it's not a huge boot, but the space that you're given is still relatively practical for the size that it is. And you can even fit a moose in the back, but as long as it's this one. Now, what about batteries and range in the EX30? Well, there are a choice of two batteries. The lineup starts with a 49 kilowatt hour battery. That's usable capacity in the single motor version of the EX30. This, by the way, is a lithium iron phosphate unit, LFP, which is a robust type of battery that is less resource intensive to produce and isn't as susceptible to degradation as other batteries. BYD and Tesla use them. The downside is that they are less energy dense. This single motor model has an official range of just 200 miles, which is not very far. But the bigger 64 kilowatt hour single motor extended range option is a more common nickel magnesium cobalt NMC battery, which bumps that up to 275 miles. The maximum range on offer is decent, but some way off the 319 mile Hyundai Kona electric. A heat pump comes as standard on all models, by the way heating the interior in a more efficient way in cold conditions. Now, we are driving a single motor extended range EX30 and it's predicted that this is going to eventually be the most popular EX30. So what are you getting for your money on the road? Well, to be honest, you're getting something that is really properly nicely polished. So for a start, I'm sorry that this footage is beautiful sunshine, but the reality is it's pouring with rain. We can't do much about that and neither can the car. But really it's only the raindrops that you can hear in this interior because it's very refined. So road noise, wind noise, you're very well isolated from that in this interior. And the ride is really comfortable. It's difficult to pick holes in it really. Admittedly, we're on very, very smooth, flat roads here in Barcelona, which are very different from the battered roads we have to drive back in the UK. But whether we've been on the motorway or in town or on these twisty country roads, it's been very well controlled in the way that it rides, very nicely cushioned. And the handling's also pretty good, really. Now this is an electric SUV, so a low down hatchback is gonna naturally handle with a bit more poise than this. But to be honest, this stays remarkably flat through corners and the steering is really nicely weighted. So you've always got confidence over what the front wheels are doing and it's just a really satisfying car to do some miles in. There's a one pedal driving function and the brake pedal itself is very naturally weighted. So it's really effortless to drive this car smoothly. It is just a really nice thing to do some miles in. When it comes to charging speeds, the smaller battery can take on electricity at a rate of up to 134 kilowatts, bringing it from 10 to 80% capacity in 26 minutes. While the bigger battery requires just two minutes more if you can find a charger that supports its 153 kilowatt maximum rate. That is faster than the Nero EV and BYD Atto 3. There is, by the way, one more version of the EX30 which we should talk about. Okay, now we're in the twin motor performance. And this really is a hilarious inclusion in the Volvo EX30 lineup. So it has two electric motors, one on the front axle, one on the rear axle. That makes it four wheel drive. And it has 422 brake horsepower. So the naught to 62 miles an hour time quoted is 3.6 seconds. And that is quicker than what a Porsche 911 Carrera S can manage. And this really, in a straight line, is ridiculously quick. Of course, the smart hashtag one 
also has a silly option like this in its lineup with the Brabus hashtag one. But this is actually a little bit quicker than that car. And it feels slightly better resolved as well because this still has the same qualities of the single motor version of the car. So it's got a nice ride. Things are fairly controlled and smooth. Still stays quite flat through corners. And when you're driving it around town, you'd have no idea that it's capable of the straight line performance that it can manage. But then of course, this is the most expensive option in the EX30 lineup. But still, for £42,000 or £44,000, depending on the trim level that you go for, if you want similar pace to what this EX30 offers in the electric SUV class, then really you'd have to go for a Tesla Model Y Performance or a Kia EV6 GT. And this can be about 15, 20,000 pounds cheaper than those cars. Now, the price. There's been quite a lot of excitement and anticipation for the Volvo EX30 because this is a fully electric SUV which starts at just under 34,000 pounds. Now, of course, no electric car really is actually cheap, but compared to other electric SUVs and lots of other electric cars, that starting price really is very competitive. That is though for the smaller battery with a 200 mile range, so it might not be perfect for everyone. And of course, an entry level MG4 is still 8,000 pounds cheaper than this car. But then the EX30 definitely feels like a more expensive product than the MG4. If you wanna go for the bigger battery with the longer range, then there's quite a big jump in price. It goes up to 38,545 pounds. And at that price point, it doesn't stand out compared to its rivals, but it still seems priced fairly compared to things like the VW ID3 and the Hyundai Kona Electric. The EX30 starting price will actually get cheaper in the future as well. So at the minute, there are two trim levels to choose from. There's Plus and Ultra, but there will be an entry level core model joining the lineup. Now, full details are yet to be revealed on exactly what it will get as standard, but it's expected it will have a starting price between 31 and 32,000 pounds. There's also gonna be an EX30 cross country, which will be a version of the regular car with greater ground clearance and some off-road styling touches. For now, there are two trim levels to choose from, and even entry level plus is very well equipped with a heat pump, heated front seats, adaptive cruise control, range topping ultra trim, doesn't really add any essential kit. The main highlights are a 360 degree camera and that fixed panoramic sunroof. So considering it's quite a big jump in price, we'd sooner stick with plus. At the price point for ultra models, the EX30 starts to look a bit too expensive. Still, with the bulk of the lineup very competitive against rivals on price, on top of the fact this is a great car, the EX30 is a hugely appealing and highly impressive electric SUV for a broad market of buyers. Thanks for watching this review. If you want to see another one, then click there. And if you want to go to whatcar.com for a great deal on your next car, click there.